Come to God, all who you are afraid. Come, all who are anxious. Come, all who are weary. And in Him find peace and hope and rest. This Advent and always. As we begin the Advent season, we want to assure you that there is hope that is being brought to us. It's a sign of saying there is hope in Christ. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, we as Christians, or we as believers, we have got hope in Christ. Our hope is not based on human philosophy or a human understanding. Our hope is based in the Bible. What does the Bible say? It gives us hope. Whatever the situation, whatever the environment is, there is hope. So let us have hope in God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you right now. We come before you and we thank you for everything. For you made the heaven and the earth and fills creation with the Spirit. And he even calls us into friendship with you. God, who loves creation as the Father values us, God speaks through and wind and rain, through heat and ice. We'll find God in the hearts of those who love us. We'll find God in the outstretched hands of those who seek our help. We'll find God in the energy of the universe. We'll find God because God looks for us. Here now in this place, with these people listening, we come before God. And lift up our heads because the God of glory loves us. May you bless us this morning, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. I would ask my brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God that comes from the book of Luke chapter 21, verses 5 to 37. It's a long reading. God bless you. Praise God and good morning and it's uh, great to be here with you guys this, again this morning and being able to read the word. Uh, it's, a, it's a good one this morning on the signs of the end times. It's always something that sparks the imagination and interest of every Christian of uh, the end times. So uh, we'll get into it. As Johnson mentioned, it is Luke 21, 5 to 37. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen and what will be the signs that they are about to take place? He replied, Watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famine and pestilence in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. This will result in you being witnesses to them. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. For I will give you the words of wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me but not a hair on your head will perish. By standing firm you will gain life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 
Let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city, for this is the time of punishment in fulfilment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against the people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighted down with dissipation, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Wow, praise God, what a verse, uh, what, a, what a chapter. So um, can't wait to hear what Johnson's got to tell us this week and share with us and teach us. It's going to be really great. So bring open ears and... Yeah, let's check it out. Praise God. Thanks, Johnson. Uh, as I've indicated in my prayers earlier on, I said we need to have hope. And uh, my theme for today is hope for the end times. Hope for the end times. In fact, no reading of Luke is complete without coming to realize that Luke is concerned that the world understands that Jesus is the hope of the world. And that any teaching that leads away from the fact is a false teaching. No matter what, no matter when, Jesus will be there to give us life. So, and he said, beware that you are not led astray. For men will come in my name and say, I am he. And the time is near. Do not get, go after them. Those were Jesus' words. Do not Go after them. This is the heart of our gospel reading today. For those of us who live comfortable middle class existence, it can be easy to dismiss our whole reading with its predictions of persecutions, earthquakes, and feminines. God would those how could those apply to our lives today? For those of us who live comfortable lives in Christian majority countries. We do not know what it is to be persecuted for our faith because we are permitted to do what we want. Free choices of things. But sometimes we don't get them as we wish. And if we live comfortable, middle class existence, we are likely have never really been hungry. So we cannot even begin to imagine what it looks like to go for a long period of time without enough to eat. We don't know what it means. Depending on where we live, an earthquake might be a real possibility, but we are like in a well-designed, we live in a well-designed house and operate in a community with an early warning system. So earthquake does not mean the same thing for us that it does for our ancestors. 
or of those who Luke was writing for in the first century. So this seems a text designed for its original hearers. It seems designed for the early Christians for whom the end of the world and the return of Christ seemed imminent. So those who did not have scientific or economic explanations for famines or earthquakes. So those who lived in a world where choosing to follow Jesus and acknowledge him as the Messiah, as the Son of God, was to take your life in your hands, quite literally. For thousands in the early years of the church, being a Christian meant persecution and frequently death. If you lived during the early times. So how would this gospel text about the end times and the likelihood of persecution be relevant to us in the 21st century? How would it be relevant in our own situation? Here I retained Jesus' command, beware that you are not led astray, for men will come in my name and say I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. So beware that you are not led astray. There is a message to which the 21st century Christians can relate. While we may not face the same immediate life and death situations as so many of our forbearers in the faith did, we do face considerable temptations. We are in fact in a greater danger of being led astray because there are a lot of things that are happening in our lives. The temptations in this world are great. Many of us may become confronted by those who demean our faith and point out that it is wrong with institutional religion. They often seem content in their beliefs and can tempt us to think our lives would be easier if we just gave up on this whole following Jesus thing. That's why I find that Christians are being attacked from every corner. Because they think if we live to worship Christ, then things will be all right. But I don't think so. That's not the truth. Every day we are bombarded by advertisements that tell us that if we only drank this coffee, if you only drove this car and banged at this bank, our lives would be the picture of fulfillment. We are surrounded by clever and creative enticement to buy more and to buy into the idea that material goods can give our lives meaning and make us feel fulfilled. Right now, I know people are buying, are preparing for, for Christmas. Some are buying a lot of things that they will never use. Some are even buying and you, they stock with them even for the next Christmas for 2023. So I'm saying sometimes we have that fulfillment in buying and accumulating all these material things and few things are okay. It's not like that, thanks well. It is all too tempting to give in to our self-desires. When we are wronged, it is tempting to give in to a desire for revenge or visions. Right now, we, are, we have got some people we can talk to. We have got some people we don't want to engage with because we have not forgiven them. And if there is a desire in us that we, want, we are waiting for the day to revenge upon them. We are angry. It is tempting to lash out anger and to hate those we love. Because these are some of the things we encounter. It is tempting to give in to our laziness and to stay in bed instead of going to church. To give more to those in need. To resolve to be a more active member of our community. And the like the next year or when it is more convenient for us. It is tempting. That's why sometimes now people... Because we are able to hear the word of God from different points. YouTube, Facebook, everywhere, on social media, all platforms of social media. But I'm saying, regardless of hearing the word from all those platforms of social media, we still need to gather as, to, as members of the body of Christ, where we can gather together. So it's not enough, we need to gather together. That is not who Jesus asked us to be. This is not the life he calls us to be. He does not call us to laziness, material galaton, or to a faith that cherry picks the simple and fun parts. No, Jesus calls us to be his followers, to be Christians. Jesus calls us to engage deeply with our faith and to be committed Christians. That is what Jesus is calling us to be. We are called to be committed to living lives of faithful discipleship. Who are we? This does not mean that our lives will be easy. No. He never commanded that when you become Christians, your life will be easy. 
They've been, and no doubt with the times when we want to give in to temptation. When we want to seek immediate gratification or the path that seems easier, but would be wrong to do so. We don't need to seek those things which are easier. This is not just a matter of blindly following a leader because he asked us to follow. The path of being a Christian may be challenging at times. And it may not always seem like the easy road, but it is a path worth following for our reward is great. I know what you may be thinking. Not this, your reward is in heaven, it's tough again. No, 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 no. The reward is great. Even while it's here, here on earth. The reward is great. The church has tried that before and it didn't go well. Well, don't worry. I'm not implying that we should spend our earthly lives suffering so we can seek a reward in heaven. That's not what I'm talking about. I firmly believe there are rewards for our faith lives right here and now. When we follow Christ in the right manner, when we follow Christ as committed disciples, yes, our rewards are even here. Being a follower of Jesus satisfies a hunger and a desire in my soul, a desire for meaning and acceptance. Being a follower of Jesus means that I am not alone in this. Even on the bad days when I feel unworthy or as though I am carrying the weight of the world, I am not alone. God is with me and even when I feel uncertain about the future or my place in it, I know that it is not all about me, but God is with me. So whenever all these things which have been mentioned in the scriptures are happening, for me as a Christian, it's not my worry. Why? Because God is in control. I am under his umbrella. I can trust that I'm part of something much bigger than me. I can trust that in some small way I do matter. Because God is concerned with my life. I'm a beloved child of God and in some way my being present, each of us being present on this ever matters. We are part of something big. We are part of building the kingdom of God. A part of making the world a better place. So whatever we are doing, whatever your contribution you are doing, you are making this earth a better place as a Christian. There is no need for us to be afraid. Brothers and sisters, don't be afraid of what we are hearing. Christian people have nothing to fear about the end of the time. Christian people have nothing to fear about death or the end of the world. In our world of suffering and pain, we have nothing to fear. We will not be immune to the pain of this world. We will even pass through them. Even though I pass through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We are just passing through. That's not the end. So Christians are not set apart from this world, but experience all the harsh realities of this world. Someone said, whatever the future may hold, God can be trusted to see you through. In the meantime, demonstrate your faith and faithfulness by doing whatever it is God is calling you to do. So you do what God has called you to do. Faithfulness is what is required. While the personal, internal, spiritual reward of following Jesus is significant, I believe it also matters because following Jesus inspires us to be our best and to do our best in the world. Following Jesus inspires us to be better people, to pay attention to the needs of those around us, to do our part to make this broken, sinful world a bit more like the kingdom of God. And that is what we've been called to do. As we live out our days and wait eternity, whenever it may come, we don't know the date. We don't know when it is going to happen. Why not spend every day trying to experiment in some way the joy of living? Even if I am told that tomorrow I am going to die, I better spend the day, all the waiting hours, rejoicing in God. Rejoicing in God. No matter how many days we may have to live, let's ask ourselves, how is it with centering with the joy of living? In our time, in our place, perhaps we need to slow down in order to keep moving. In our times. 
We know that Jesus' words in verse 18 cannot mean that Jesus' followers will not be harmed by their enemies. Some of them we know were beaten, thrown into jail, be killed. But Jesus affirms us that the ultimate security of these disciples is in God's hands. So our security is in God's hand. It's not running away from this world. It's not maybe going right into the cave or maybe throwing ourselves into the sea. No, that's not it. Our security is in God's hand. That is where our security is. Not in anything. The people who persecuted the disciples and other Christians in the areas of the church failed to understand that in the end, God will fashion eternity. That is why we can take great comfort in Jesus' ways. By your endurance, will gain your souls. So, our souls in God's hands. Hope for the future, hope for today, is worth for living. Making each day count, even if it is just taking a walk. Just taking a walk, seeing the beauty of the world, is really great. We cannot fear the future because that is in God's hands. We cannot fear today because that is in God's hands too. So why worry? Why fearing? When everything is in God's hands. My life is not my life on my own. My life is in God's hands. So I don't need to fear anything. Because my life is in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands. So live for the moment and wait. Wait for the coming not with fear. But with hope. We wait planning our lives. Living our lives, hoping our lives will mean something to those around us. So we, we, we wait planning our life, hoping that something good is going to happen. Why? Because God is in control. Brothers and sisters, I just want to urge you. May we commit our soul to following Jesus more deeply. It's more about following, not trying to lead Jesus. Not trying to guide Jesus. Because some of the things we say is like we are ahead of Jesus already. We have taken our lives in our own hands. We are now directing people where to go. Instead of being followers, we are now calling Jesus to follow us. Let Jesus be in charge. Let Jesus be in control. We may commit our lives to resisting the myriad of temptation that distract us from this way. May we commit ourselves to sharing the good news and doing our part to build the kingdom of God. Amen to that. Full stop. That's what we are called to do. We have been called to be followers of Christ. Not to be leaders of Christ. We are followers of Christ. Knowing that our life is in God's hands. So whatever you are doing, just know that your life is in God's hands. So why should I worry if someone is saying your life is in God's hands? You know, I, 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 I like being a child. When you are a child, you, didn't, you don't determine what you are going to put on. You, didn't, you don't determine what the shower or the bath you are going to receive. Mom looks for the water and says, okay, this is warm water, right for the, the right temperature for the child to be bathed. These are clean, nice clothing I need to put on my child. He puts on the lotion on your body because your life is in your hands. Your life is in God's hands. So brothers and sisters, I just want to urge you, your life is in God's hands. Put your life in God's hands. And then you have hope for the end times. You've got to hope for the end times. You now don't scratch your head trying to interpret some of the ways you do not even understand. Why? Because you've got hope in Christ that your life is in God's hands. May God bless you. May God help you. As you try to think over what I've just said, God bless you from now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything. We thank you for the life you have given us. We thank you that you are there and you always help us. Loving God, we pray for all those bowed down by fear and anxieties 
for those in places of violence and war, we pray for peace. For those in communities divided by race and religion, we pray for understanding. For those who are hungry and cold, we pray for support. For those whose health is failing, those who are suffering from COVID-19, we pray for courage. For those who, whose relationships are breaking, we pray for healing. For those who have lost hope, we pray for encouragement. For all people and for all creation, we pray for blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, we are now going to take our offering. And as we take our offering, we are saying we believe in God, who is the Alpha and Omega of our life. So, worry not. Be happy when you are in Christ. Sleep well. Rest well. Because your life is in God's hand. Don't worry. Be happy. Be a Christian. God bless you. Let us pray for the offerings. As you put your offering and thanksgiving to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you continue to look after us. Because our lives are in your hands. We are not worried. And we rejoice in you. We surrender everything to you. Sometimes we are tempted, Lord Jesus Christ, because of what we hear, we are tempted to bring fear over faith. Father, we have faith in you. Hope for the future is laid in you. Even when we are being told the time is near, we still have hope in you. Father, bless these offerings. Bless them, Father. Use them for the expansion of your kingdom. In your name I pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.